Talisimes Kataskis SA of Greece makes marine equipment. The company has been experiencing losses on its bilge pump product line for several years. The most recent quarterly contribution format income statement for bilge pump product line follows. Notice the 80,000 euro net operating loss. Discontinuing the bilge pump wood product line would not affect sales of other product lines and would have no effect on the company's total general factory overhead or total purchasing department expenses. Would you recommend the bilge pump product line be continued? Support your answer with computations. At first glance, the 80,000 euro loss on the bilge pump line suggests that we would be better off discontinuing the bilge pump. However, we were told that the company's total general factory overhead or totaling and total purchasing department expenses would continue even if we dropped the bilge pump product line. Let's go ahead and solve this by using an incremental approach and then a comparative income statements approach. If we drop the bilge pump, pump line, we will lose our $460,000 contribution margin provided by the bilge pumps. In terms of our fixed cost, we need to compare that with our avoidable fixed cost. If we drop the bilge pump line, we will no longer need to spend $270,000 on euros, euros on advertising. The depreciation on equipment, since it has no resale value, is a sunk cost and will continue whether we continue or discontinue the bilge pump line, so it's not relevant to our decision. The general factory overhead of 105,000 euros per quarter, we're told, is a fixed allocated cost that will continue whether we make the bilge pump or not, so it's not relevant to our decision. The salary of the product line manager is a relevant cost. It is a avoidable fixed cost. If we don't produce the bilge pumps, we don't need a product line manager. The insurance on our inventories of 8,000 euros per quarter is also an avoidable fixed cost. If we don't have the bilge pump, we won't have inventories and won't need to have insurance on them. We're told that the uh, purchasing department cost, though, is a common cost allocated on the basis of sales dollars. And common cost will continue whether we drop the bilge pump or not. So it's not a relevant cost for our decision making. So our total fixed cost that can be avoided if we drop the bilge pump line are $310,000, but we will lose the $460,000 contribution margin. So the net disadvantage of dropping the bilge pump line would be a €150,000 uh, decrease in net operating income per year. Let's go ahead and do comparative income statements if we keep the bilge pump line and if we drop it. We were given our income statement if we keep the bilge pump line, and currently it has an $80,000 net operating loss. If we drop the bilge pump line, sales will be zero. Our variable expenses will also be eliminated if we drop the bilge pump line, meaning we have no contribution margin. Again, in terms of looking at our fixed cost, our advertising cost will be avoided if we drop the bilge pump line, we don't need to spend money advertising pumps we don't make. However, the depreciation on our factory equipment, since it has all, no alternative use or resale value, is a sunk cost and will continue if we keep or drop the bilge pump line, as will the general factory overhead, which we're told is a common allocated cost, and it's allocated on the basis of machine hours. It won't change if we drop the bilge pump line. The product of the salary or the salary of the product line manager, however, can be avoided. It will be zero if we drop the bilge pump line. We can also eliminate the insurance on inventories. But we're told the purchasing department allocated cost of $45,000 per year, which is allocated on the basis of sales dollars, will continue regardless of whether we make or drop, keep or drop the bilge pump. So our total fixed cost will remain at $230,000 for a net operating loss of $230,000 since we no longer have a contribution margin. If we calculate the difference between keeping the bilge pump and dropping it, we see the total difference in net operating loss is $150,000 that we calculated using our incremental approach at the beginning.